you have um, pointed out in various talks that um, all those countries in close economic relation with China will consider security concern to, to be the top priority uh, mm -hmm. and then the economic prosperity will, will be this, this of second order. As you said, China wants a significant amount of time that this region, want to ensure this whole region is in peace so that China can rise peacefully. So China has a significant interest in maintaining regional peace. And it doesn't want to make the, this whole region of Asia Pacific a, a dirt jungle in which everybody will compete with each other ruthlessly. So, so if China can make this prospect clear to everyone else, then why should those countries, those smaller and, let's say, weaker state, not in a good position to defend for themselves militarily, why should those countries uh, be so concerned um, that, that, that China might invade them? Talk is cheap. Yes. And it's very difficult for the Chinese yeah. to convince its neighbors that it will treat them with great respect and never present them with any serious problems uh, that arise from Chinese behavior. You, you just, you can't guarantee that. You know, the United States told Colonel Gaddafi that if he gave up his weapons of mass destruction, we would leave him alone. He then helped kill Colonel Gaddafi, and he's now dead as a result of us breaking our promise. The other thing I would point out to you, Chris, is if you were to travel around Latin America and you were to ask countries in South America and Central America what it's like <laughs> living with the United States, uh, they would tell you it's not always a pretty picture. Uh, it, the United States is a heavy-handed country. And that's because the United States is a great power. I'm just saying to you, they are in the neighborhood. When you live near a gorilla, to be very careful not to make the gorilla angry. I, I believe the Chinese, if you look at what they're doing, they're very interested in being the most powerful country in East Asia. Don't, mm. don't, don't you think China would like to become the dominant military and economic power in East Asia and push the Americans out if it could? If I were Chinese, that would certainly be my goal. That must be your goal, right? Don't you want to get rid of the Americans? Yeah. Do you want yeah. the American military on your doorstep? That, that's just, okay, that is one thing. And push around against the smaller states, another thing. Because while well, you see the, the, the Chinese, uh, if you look, listen to Foreign Ministry of China, uh, if you listen, uh, uh, if you look at Chinese news, then you get the idea, the, the very vague sense that they portray the regional competitor not as anyone of those smaller countries in terms of disputes with other countries. That China is increasingly targeting America, but, but China wants to make a distinction between America and its regional allies. Again, I, I want to be very clear here. I think that all great powers, the mm -hmm. United States I and China, behave in heavy-handed ways with regard to minor powers. I think the great powers themselves don't believe they do that. They do it, but they don't believe it because mm -hmm. they tell themselves a story about how they're a benevolent force on the world <laughs> stage and how their neighbors should love them and they never do anything wrong. You know, we have American exceptionalism. Yeah. And sometimes when I listen to you talk, it sounds like you're talking about Chinese <laughs> exceptionalism. This goes with the territory. But in the final analysis, great uh -huh. power is basically gorillas.